The vast majority of champions in League of Legends have two main resources, health and mana. Health, also known as HP like in many other games, is a statistic that determines the amount of damage you can sustain before you die and are sent back to your fountain. Mana is a stat that determines if you can or cannot use an ability. This is a concept everyone knows, but of course, there are several champions within the roster who operate outside of this law, containing an altogether different resource that powers their abilities, or sometimes none at all. They get to cast them for free. Some time ago, I made a video covering manaless champions, and went further in depth on them through episodes on energy champions. The idea of a champion having no cost to their abilities, or cost that is infinite in nature, has been a facet of competitive discourse ever since the first one. There's obviously a lot more beneath the surface than whether someone does or doesn't use mana, but on a fundamental level, it seems rather unfair for someone like Riven to be able to cast as many abilities as she wants, as often as she wants, while another like Viora has to ration her mana and use her abilities very sparingly so as not to be caught without access to any of them. But there used to be a subset of members, albeit a small one even back then, who actually used their own health as a casting resource. For some, it was native to just one ability, for others, it would define their entire playstyle. Yet we haven't seen any new representatives for that group in years. So what happened? Did Riot forget they even existed, or are they intentionally ignoring them? In this video, I'm going to be going over the archetype of health caster champions. On a side note, I'm currently playing in a free entry League of Legends tournament on Z-League, and they're hosting a 3500 RP giveaway. Z-League is a web platform that lets you compete in League of Legends tournaments to earn cash and credit prizes. They have many different free entry tournament styles that place you into custom skill-based divisions for fair matches. To enter the RP giveaway, sign up using the link in the description and reply to the pinned comment below with your Z-League username and a winner will be decided two weeks from now. By using my link, you'll also get some bonus credits to enter cash tournaments for free. Thanks again to Z-League for sponsoring the video, hope you guys make good use of it, but for now, let's get back into it. As per usual, let's start with introductions. While all 161 champions possess a health bar, a margin of them have one or multiple abilities that require them to pay a health cost instead of mana to be activated. Conveniently, the list is rather small, so I can go through each one. For starters, let's go over the champions with singular abilities, Ivern, Olaf, and Soraka. Though, I would hardly call Ivern's passive a proper health cost given that it can only be used in PvE scenarios. For Soraka, she effectively transfers her own health to her allies, also making it somewhat debatable. That leaves us with just Olaf, whose reckless swing eats up a base number plus a portion of his total AD as health instead of mana, refunding the cost if it manages to land the killing blow. Despite having a mana bar and very much relying on it, Olaf's Reckless Swing establishes the prevailing theme of HP uses, which is further developed by champions with HP costs throughout their entire kit. At the moment, only three of them remain, Dr. Mundo, Vladimir, and Zack, although there used to be two more with Aatrox and Mordekaiser paying health costs on their previous iterations as well. The basic premise of HP users is self-explanatory, activating abilities drains their health instead of mana, meaning they basically deal self-inflicted damage. Common sense would dictate it's rather counterproductive to hurt yourself when the enemy champions are doing the same to you. So how are HP users viable? As I'm sure many of you know by now, they have something in their kit that allows them to replenish lost health, given they need to make liberal use of it to apply any meaningful pressure. Consequently, this makes them excel in protracted engagements over fast, quick, and dirty fights. The longer it takes for you to kill them, the better it is for them. Despite being a very easy concept to grasp, health casters are not a common sight these days. They were always a niche archetype, but with only three of them still hanging around, they've more or less disappeared from public attention. And before Season 12's durability update, the high burst high DPS meta spanning several years was a severe blow to their popularity. But considering the number of manaless champions has been steadily on the rise, why haven't they made a new HP caster? It seems like they would be more fairly designed than someone who can mash their face on the keyboard at no consequence to themselves. The biggest issue surrounding HP users is the very resource they use to cast abilities, health. Contrary to popular belief, non-resource abilities like what you see on Riven or Aatrox are not actually the best type of resource. Sure, they're allowed to spam Q, W, and E as often as they please, but they don't have as immediate or profound of an impact on the current situation. Paying a health cost is obviously not good, as mentioned before. You want to keep your health as close to full as possible throughout a game because dying is objectively detrimental to your team's success. Now before you say, what if your team aces the enemy team off your death? Well, a 5 for 1 is most definitely worth it, but it's not as good as a 5 for 0. Anyways, since HP users burn through a lot of health to use their abilities, they need some way to replenish it quickly so as to avoid killing themselves from clearing minions or being forced to recall after one trade. However, to regenerate lost health, it has to be accessible enough to guarantee a net positive, but not too accessible to where the enemy laner, and by extension the enemy team, has no agency in stopping you from recovering back to full. Therein lies the problem. You can't accomplish this pragmatically without one side coming out on top, and for health casters, it has to be them. 
For example, Vladimir's sanguine pool and tides of blood drain a lot of health out of him, so he has to rely on transfusion to recoup the blood loss, no pun intended. Transfusion is a 600 range point and click ability that drops to a 4.6 second cooldown at rank 5, and given that Vladimir builds a lot of ability haste is roughly a 2.5 second cooldown late game. On top of healing for a base amount, the empowered version increases the healing, more so if he's gravely injured. Even with the reduction against minions, Vladimir can theoretically recharge back to full HP so long as there's a minion wave or something to use Q1 and he doesn't use the parts of his kit that cost health. Every health caster behaves in this way. On average, they heal more HP than they lose from using abilities, and so, if you leave them to their own devices, they can easily get back to full health without having to base, thus having some of the best lane endurance out of the entire cast of champions. You might say, then why not give health cost to all of their abilities so that that way they can't just AFK farm and regen back up? For the simple reason that it would make them entirely unplayable. Say we were to make Vlad pay a health cost on transfusion. Not only does it defeat the purpose of the ability, but essentially, it discourages any direct confrontation involving Vladimir. The sole reason he's able to function as a champion is because the healing from his Q offsets the cost from W and E and then some. That way he doesn't just bleed out in the neutral. HP users are designed to never run out of health by their own hand. Mundo, Zack, Vladimir, Old Aatrox, Old Mordekaiser. The only way they'll die is through outside intervention, such as damage from an enemy champion, monster, what have you. That's the balance issue surrounding health as a resource, with it being responsible for determining if a champion is alive or dead. HP users are required to heal more than they lose via ability usage, or else they're infinitely worse than any other champion in the game, even mana ones. Think about it. Let's say you're playing Ari and you spam Q, W, and E like a high school girl at the mall after getting her first credit card. Eventually, you're gonna run out of mana, but that doesn't automatically put you in danger since your health is unaffected by whatever abuse your mana suffers. Such isn't the case for HP users. If you carelessly use your abilities, even with the ability to recover them back, you will run out of health. A common argument against health casters having this privilege is that being out of mana is equally as punishing as being out of health. And that is complete horse manure. There's a huge difference between being out of mana and being out of HP. You still have auto attacks, you still have a margin for error, and time to escape whatever situation you're in. If you're one hit from death, you're basically screwed right then and there. Additionally, health casters are more vulnerable to grievous wounds than other healing based champions in light of making a 25-40% to lower return on investment so to speak. So when balancing them, you have to factor in how much worse off they'll be if everyone on the enemy team runs Ignite. That's partly the reason why Mundo's ultimate was changed from healing a portion of his missing health on cast to gaining a portion of his missing health as bonus health. It was the way to bypass how bad the healing reduction affected maximum dosage. Lowering the efficiency of their recovery and or increasing the cost on their non-restorative abilities is a fine line to tread for two reasons. The first ties back to the aforementioned accessibility dilemma. You want their sustain to be within arm's reach so they can maintain consistent pressure and not have to back away for long periods of time to regenerate, but not too accessible to the point where they become indestructible, and more often than not, it leans in the direction of being too accessible. The second, they're inherently required to have an above average if not strong neutral game. Prior to Aatrox's rework, he had a gameplay update that altered the way his passive works and stripped his Q and the damage part of his W of their health costs, meaning the only thing in his kit that ate up HP was his E, Blades of Torment, and only a negligible 30 at that. But prior to that, Aatrox had to pay health costs on all three of his basic abilities. Dark Flight used to spend 10% of his current health. Blood Price, the bonus damage attack, had a similar scaling in cost to Olaf's Reckless Swing, and Blades of Torment used to cost 5% current health as well. Problem is, Blood Thirst, the healing attack, scaled off his bonus AD instead of missing health, tripling if he was at half health or less. Essentially, if Aatrox wanted to heal a lot with every W, he not only needed to build attack speed, but attack damage, a very squishy build for someone with poor mobility and resilience. Bar and lifesteal or anything else, Aatrox's innate sustain wasn't adequate enough to keep him in the black. Also, every time he wanted to focus on healing, he would lose out on a ton of DPS, and often he would be exclusively using Bloodthirst to stay healthy, preventing him from using Blood Price, which is a huge portion of his pressure. Overall, he sustained too much self-inflicted damage and couldn't efficiently heal it back up because he was itemizing AD and attack speed to stay relevant. His old revive passive was originally meant to circumvent this, giving him a second lease on life, but since that exhausted all of his blood well, he had no attack speed on revival, making it super easy to just kill him again. Even after his mini rework, Aatrox got a string of buffs to his base numbers to allow him the option to build more defense, as he would still struggle to stay afloat with how much punishment he took and how poor his regeneration was. Aatrox was an example of what happens when an HP user's sustain is heavily restricted. He was one of the worst champions in League. You might as well play Trendemir, Jax, or some other auto-attacker. 
Mordekaiser was the other champion whose health costs were taking out during his VGU. His condition was a bit different, not as egregious as Aatrox, but it still had his fair share of issues. Mordekaiser's Q, W, and E costed a flat amount of health, but a portion of the damage he dealt would turn into a shield, effectively refunding the cost in a roundabout way. But he still needed a way to actually heal, and that was through Harvester of Sorrow, which if he struck two champions or monsters was pretty substantial. 380 base, plus 60% AP, and Children of the Grave was an HP drain as well. Granted, his overall design was rather poorly handled, but a contributing factor to that was that his sustain was too conditional and therefore inefficient. Thanks to Iron Man, Mordekaiser was excellent in short burst trades, but if he was against anyone with a strong neutral game like a ranged top laner or another drain tanger like him, he could lose to them very easily, so they axed the entire arrangement and made all of his abilities cost free post rework. Now, health casters are required to have a neutral game that is at least above average because they need that legroom to heal up without being in any immediate danger. For Vladimir, he can just Q-spam from a safe distance and regen up. Zack achieves a net profit by pressing all of his abilities on enemies given that his blobs recover max health while he loses current health. Not to mention, that max health goes up to 6.25% by level 16, and at that point he has Spirit Visage, so he can full heal off a single camp. Even so, early on, it's enough to make sure he doesn't die from clearing jungle mobs. Dr. Mundo regenerates health purely by existing, and as long as he damages an enemy champion with every use of infected bone saw, he doesn't take that much damage otherwise. Mundo, Zack, and Vladimir are the only ones who survive this long despite being health users due to regenerating far more than they lose, and being able to without directly exposing themselves to imminent attack. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're well designed. One other trait they share is that all of them are able to build durability stats without compromising on damage by much, if at all. Vlad's passive grants him bonus HP based on his ability power and bonus ability power based on his HP, and he is equal parts health and AP centric sustain. Transfusion heals based on AP, but the empowered version is based on missing health. Sanguine Pool scales off his bonus health and heals him for 15% of the damage dealt. Mundo's Bone Saw does percent current health damage, so it naturally increases as time goes on and enemies get more HP. Heart Zapper and Blunt Force Trauma scale off bonus health and he gets more attack damage based on his bonus health from maximum dosage, allowing him to go full tank items and still keep up in damage. Zack as well. Stretching Strikes is based on his max health, Unstable Matter does max health damage, meaning it stays relevant, and the later the game goes, his battle healing is near unbeatable since he's picking up like 20 blobs and regaining so much health. This lets him build items like Sunfire, Aegis, and Demonic Embrace, slowly but surely burning away at your health bar while you're being gaslighted into thinking your attacks are healing him. It's very possible for HP users to straight up counter your entire team if you don't have enough damage to either burst or shred them down, and the later the game goes, the harder it is to do the former. Ironically, even traditional tank busters like Darius and Renekton get outscaled by Zack and Mundo because they just can't keep up with the amount of healing those guys have. In other words, the only ones who can efficiently handle them are skirmishers like Viora and Trindamir or machine gunners like Kogma, Vayne, and Kai'Sa. It's a very degenerate experience for a lot of players. That's why nowadays, instead of creating champions who play around HP costs, Riot decided to switch approaches and make battle healing champions instead, which is what Mordekaiser and Aatrox turned into, and I guess to some extent Belveth. Relatively speaking, they have a ton of sustain in their kits, but it's only when directly engaging in combat with enemy champions. They don't take a lot of self-inflicted damage, but it's balanced out by not healing back to full HP off a single minion wave. That being said, I kind of wish there were more champions like this. There's a lot of room for skill expressive design that taxes the player's resource management. I can't think of anything at the moment, but right now the remaining HP users are pretty stat checky in nature. Although, it's probably more effort than it's worth it. With anti-healing in the game, every matchup against HP users devolves into buying an early Bramble Vest, Oblivion Orb, or Executioner's Calling. Granted, they did weaken healing reduction from 40-60 to 25-40, but 40% is still a lot if you think about it. So the balance team has no choice but to consider how well HP users can deal with grievous wounds, but that usually results in them feeling stronger than they really are for those who don't build it. Should the enemy team be forced to pay the healing reduction tax just because your team has a Mundo, Zack, and or Vladimir? It's kind of the same thing as paying the QSS tax against suppressors like Malzahar, Skarner, and Warwick. You don't want to waste all that gold for just one champion, but if you don't, they'll be unstoppable and run your entire team down. In essence, while HP users are not viewed as frustrating to deal with as no cost ability champs like Yone, Riven, and Viego, they're stuck in a catch-22 situation and there aren't many easy ways to get around it. So, let me know in the comments down below if you think there's a way to design HP users in a healthy way. Apart from that, if you enjoyed today's video, it would be awesome if you gave it a like and subscribed. Consider following me on Twitter at VarsVerum, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other champion archetype discussions if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.